<laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your next comedian has been a super awesome guy. Like, he's the reason I'm doing this show. So, oh, so maybe you should blame him. Oh, shit. But, uh, no, Joseph Rogers is going to come to the stage. Give this guy a big round of applause because he's the one booking these shows. He's heading up the whole Kitsap and, or comedy and Kitsap thing. So, please, give a warm round of applause for Mr. Joseph Rogers, everyone. Man, how are you guys doing tonight? Doing good? Yeah. Woo, nice and warmed up. Got the beer in the belly? Yeah. No beer. No beer. You had a bad experience once? You don't drink beer at all? Okay, I had a whole set list prepared, but now I'm going to just focus on you. <laughs> so you've never had that episode where you're like, Blah, I'm never going to drink again. Blah. You just not said, on beer. <laughs> not on beer. Oh, we figured her out. Why did I think about that? She's a wine drinker. Jeez. Get some apple cider in her. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I'm sure, you know, as Scotty mentioned, everybody knows it's no secret. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day, no. you know? What? Yeah, I, I know. It's, so. Are you single? Is that what I am? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, he's still got time. He's still, he's still got time. Give him the benefit of that. Yeah. No, but he's a guy, so I know him enough. He's up. On a man-to-man -man level, I know him enough. But uh, I had a bad experience a couple years ago with my girlfriend. Uh, I was, I, see, the thing is that I'm not a very romantic guy. Per se, I mean, I try to be. My grandma taught me some things, you know. Um, but I try. But because it's not very romantic, she's labeled my romance as Joe Mance. <laughs> it's like a whole other shitty level of romance. Once a year or something, I do it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll get you tomorrow. Um, but I think I'm bordering on borderlining on no mance now. <laughs> Because a couple years ago, I was struggling with it, so I said, hey, I went to a friend and I said, what should I do for my girlfriend? And he says, well, if you love her, you go to Jerry. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea, actually. <laughs> See, I don't know about you guys, but I didn't know this, but Jared's a jewelry store. <laughs> Turns out Jared is actually also my drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, needless to say, things got interesting. I was like, that's a great idea. He said, what are you going to get her? I was like, I don't know. I don't want it to be too flashy. You know? He's like, yeah, I bet you. But she's going to want something that when she, when she has it, she's going to be on cloud nine. <laughs> I was like, okay. I get what you're saying, bro. I get what you're saying. I'll hit up Jared. So I hit up Jared and naturally I get her some LSD. You know? Put it, put it in her coffee. We're having breakfast. She loves when I make her omelet, so I made her an omelet, you know. Being romantic, or I mean Joe-mantic. <laughs> and she drinks her coffee, and then 20 minutes later she says, uh, Joe, why is my omelet talking to me? I was like, whoa, that's awesome! She goes, no, that's besides the point. Why is my omelet talking to me? I said, I don't know, why don't you shut up and listen? It could be an important message from a parallel universe. Come on, enjoy it while it lasts. She goes, that is not the point. What did you do? I said, happy Valentine's Day, baby. Woo! I got a couple hits on board, too. How <laughs> was I supposed to know she's never done LSD before? God! She got the full effect. <laughs> fuck Valentine's Day. It's too easy to fuck up, you know what I mean? Um, no, that's great. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, but it's also tax return season. Yeah. yeah. And when you got kids, man, it's, it's lucrative sometimes. You know what I'm saying? We get a tax credit for the kids, which is nice. Uh, the only problem is, is that it's my girlfriend's tax credit, not mine, because <laughs> I do comedy. She does real work, you know. <laughs> and so I guess you can consider her my tax return sugar mama. I guess. <laughs> she gives me a little piece, you know. But we're so we're. I don't like to say we're so broke anymore, because I mean we still have a little bit of money. But when you're broke, we have this family tradition when we get our tax return because it's so awesome. We go to the bank, we take it all out in hundreds. <laughs> we lay on the bed, spread it out, and we take pictures with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a good chance a lot of that money is going to be gone in like two weeks. So we're going to cherish the moment, you know? 
I'm in my favorite silk boxers. <laughs> you know, we're making this an intimate thing, you know, with this money. It's just everywhere, you know? And, and I'm like, oh, wait. well, I will say there was a $20 bill we were missing because we got a selfie stick so we can fit the whole family in the picture. <laughs> Get in here, kids. Half of this is technically yours anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm just sitting here. Silk boxers, cash and pose and hand, my balls hanging out. <laughs> Not a good photo. Hot. Not a good sight at all. Hot. If you want to see it later, though, I'll show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, we got kids, and kids are great. I love my kids to death. Uh, it's funny, my, I have a kid who's in second grade now, but when he was in kindergarten, they had this really cute thing they did where they made a poster of like, what's your favorite color, what's your favorite show, cartoon, and all that stuff. One of the questions is, is what do you want to be when you grow up? And my son said, I want to do what my daddy does. And I thought that was the cutest thing in the world. But at the end of the year, they take the best posters and they put them up there with all the parents there in the class. And they have the kids read off their posters. So my son reads off his poster and he says, I want to do what my daddy does. Someone in the audience says, well, what does your daddy do? He says, he stays at home and plays video games all day. <laughs> what? I thought for sure he was going to say be a stand-up comedian. So I grabbed him and I was like, hey, come here. Now listen here, you little fart knocker. It's not easy being ranked in the top 100 of Call of Duty and Halo at the same time. All right? I'm putting in work. Respect that. You don't know what it's like to have to survive on the Oregon Trail, do you? Or... Stop Carmen San Diego all over the fucking globe. No, you don't know what it's like, do you? <laughs> Kids are just easy, flying jets into fucking the ground and blowing up, and then respawning. Like, whoa, it's so easy. You have to survive on the Oregon Trail. You have to shoot those squirrels. Get that buffalo. <laughs> Kids don't get it, man. Like one pixel character. I mean, come on. You have a tough. You have a tough. <laughs> Whatever you do, when your son when your son gets older, because we also have a 14 year old, and when he dates a girl and he says to you for the first time, my girlfriend broke up with me, don't say yes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like that. <laughs> Sorry, son, I didn't like that girl. This is not a joke. He actually hooked up with a tweaker neighbor's granddaughter across the street. So naturally, we don't like these people, because it seems like wherever you go in Bremerton, you have a tweaker neighbor on the block somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so he's dating this girl, and he'd bring her over to the house, and I felt like the tweakers were invading our house. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's just over here to get information. Like, where's... <laughs> she goes back like, what kind of TV did they have back there? <laughs> so then she steals change from him, and that was the last of that. We kicked her out, you know? What'd you say, sir? <laughs> Do you know a tweaker or two? Uh, yes. Yeah? yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you're not one. You're just... Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, of course I'm Catholic. Oh, you're Catholic. That's the reason why you're not a tweaker? Because you're Catholic? That's the reason? Hey, man, I'm not usually about religion, but if it keeps you from being a tweaker, that's cool. Keep going with that. Keep going with that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're a tweaker free establishment here. Catholics welcome. Um, yeah, I can tell you're not a tweaker because you're awake during the day, first of all. And I noticed that my tweakers, man, for some reason, like, they put up floodlights at 3 in the morning and mow the lawn. Like, who the fuck does that? Can it be any more obvious that you're a fucking tweaker? Jeez. There was one time where I asked them to fix my lawnmower and they got it back in three minutes. I was like, shit! That's impressive. Don't ever ask a tweaker for anything. They'd be like, well, I got some change on a spark plug and some horror gel. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Oh man, this is great. Uh, <laughs> I uh, I like to smoke weed a lot. Anybody here like to smoke weed? Woo! It's okay. There's only one Catholic here, you guys. Come on. He's not gonna judge you. Jeez. Weed's great. One of the things I really like—it's a love-hate thing for me. One of the things I really like about weed is that 
Some people hate that you have a shitty memory, but I love it. What I'll do is